All right, shalom, shalom, giving all praises, glory, and honor to Yahweh Bahashim Yahushai, Bahashim Rekakodash. The blunt of the apostles and elders, a great millstone who will will, and peace and salutation to all you are came out there preaching the truth throughout the four corners of the earth, uh, preaching the truth, risking your lives and your freedom for the love of the gospel, all right? And um, I am the brother Shamaria of out of Gary, Indiana, Jim is Gary, Indiana, all right? Um, this lesson is going to be about two is better than one. All right, because you know it's a lot of <clears throat> a lot of guys, you know, that uh, do the lone wolf thing, you know, where honestly, two is better than one. Thus said the Lord, you know, in the scriptures it talks about being alone. You know, it talks about a man being alone. You know, it's a shame for a man to be alone. You know, pursuant to the book of uh, Ecclesiastes four, uh, I believe it starts at round nine. Uh, I'm gonna start up a little bit. Kind of. Uh, uh, let's start at 8. Ecclesiastes 4 and 8. There is one alone, and there is not a second. Yeah, he hath neither child nor brother. It says, Yet is there no end of all his labor. Neither his eye selfish with riches, satisfied, slacker. Neither his eye satisfied with riches. Neither saith he, For whom do I labor? And bereave my soul of good. All right, bereave means to, uh, to lack, all right, or decrease, or diminish. All right, so who is diminishing his soul from labor? It says, This is also vanity. Yeah, it is, it is a sore travail. See, the Lord uh, initially made woman to, for, for man to be a helpmate, all right? It is, it is not, it is not, it is a shame for a man to be alone, you know? And the men also need their brethren, you know? Like in this, like in this verse I just read, it says, uh, He hath neither child nor brother, yet is there no end of all his labor. Neither is his eye satisfied with riches. Neither saith he, For whom do I labor? And bereave my soul for good. Of good, this is also vanity. Yeah, it is sore travail. All right, because he has no one um working for yourself. If you're really honest and sincere, and not just greedy and just want to hoard riches and be a miser and a niggard, all right. If you really uh, have a just character or just um, personality, you want to work towards uh, helping someone. All right, or you want to work towards someone. That's what it says. Who? It says, for whom do I labor? And bereave myself of good. All right, because if you have a daughter or a child, that's why it says he has no brother nor a child. Because normally nine times out of ten, we labor for what? Our brethren and our, our children, our families. All right. That's why the next verse says what? Two is, it says verse nine, two are better than one because they have a good reward for their labor. It says, if they fall, one will lift up his fellow, but woe to him that is alone when he falleth, for he hath not another to help him up. All right, so I need I need my brethren. All right, I need my brethren to to lift me up when I fall. I I need them to uh to depend on me when they fall. You know, I need I need to be there for them because why? Because they bereave my soul of heavy labor. All right, which means they 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 diminish. All right, they diminish the heavy labor when um because with heavy labor comes a, a heavy weight on your mind. All right, you start to dread it. You understand? So when you're actually working for someone or towards for another person, they get it up it uplifts you because you're doing good on a, on another person's behalf. All right. Um. So I need, you know, I need my brethren to depend on me and I need to depend on them. All right. Because when I fall, I need them to be there for me. And when they fall, I would love to be there for them. Verse 11, it says, again, if two lie together, then they have, then they have heat. But how can one be warm alone? See, how can a man be warm alone? You know, and that's just an analogy. All right. You can't just warm yourself up. It'll be better for another person to exchange heat. You know, and that's that's not span that's not speaking literally, but it's, it's using the literal sense as a as a parable. 
All right. So it's like, how can you get yourself hot in the spirit? You know, you, you need another brother to get you hot in the spirit. It says, if one prevail against him, two shall, two shall withstand him. And the threefold cord is not uh, quickly broken. You know, if one prevail against him, two shall stand with him. And a three and a threefold cord is not easily broken. All right, it's like um, I remember in the book in the movie um, Planet of the Apes with Caesar. All right, he said uh, apes. He he picked up a stick and then he was explaining. He was explaining to the other ape. He said uh, he had one stick. And he broke the stick in half. He said apes single weak, and he kept breaking the stick and putting the halves next to each other and kept breaking it. And when he got to about four sticks, it was harder to break. He said, but together, strong. It's the same analogy. All right, you take one stick and you break it in half, and you keep putting those halves next to each other. Eventually, that stick is going to get harder and harder to break. You know? It's the same analogy with uh, having brothers next to you. You know? And this is all this is all just exhortation to, for uh, those those lone wolves, so, so to speak, those lone wolves out there to realize how important uh, another brother is man to have in your corner when you fall i understand sometimes you want to be alone and that's normal you know but sometimes after being alone you can't be alone forever sometimes you gotta you know reach out this is leviticus 19 and 17 it says thou shalt not have thine it's like you thou shalt not hate thine brother in thy heart thou shalt in any wise rebuke thy neighbor and not suffer sin upon him See now whether you're on the side of the rebuker or the getting or the getting rebuked, all right, it is all beneficial because one you don't because if you rebuke if you are rebuking, then you don't hate your brother. But if you're getting rebuked, then he he's saving your soul. All right, so you know that you have a a, a, a just brother next to you, man. It says, "Thou shalt not avenge nor bear any grudge against the children of thy people, which are thine brethren." But thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. I am the Lord. All right. Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. You know, and that, and 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 honestly, uh, in the book of uh, in the New Testament, man, it says uh, the greatest commandment of all. The greatest commandment of all is to love the Most High with all thy might, all thy soul, and all thy strength. But this one is likened unto it. All right, it says, but thou shalt love thy neighbor as thy love thy as thyself. I am the Lord. All right, and if you love your if you love your neighbor as you love yourself, then you're not gonna suffer sin upon him. All right. Now, um, from now let me go to Matthew twenty-two and thirty-seven. Hey, I just, I just, I just mentioned it. All right, they already written out. This is uh, Matthew twenty-two and thirty-seven. It says, Yahweh Shai said unto them, Thou shalt love the Lord with all thine heart and with all thine soul and with all thine mind. This is the first and great commandment. It says, and the second is like unto it. So it's just like it. All right, it's, it's equal to. All right. It says, Thou, thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. On these two commandments hang all the law. And the prophets, all right. So if you if you know if you if you focus on keeping these, if you you know focus on keeping these two laws, the other ones are going to mm -hmm. fall in place, all right. Because if you love the Lord, you're going to what keep His commandments, and if you love your brethren, then you're gonna you're gonna keep the Lord's commandments to a to a diligent degree to help your brother, so he won't fall, and then your brother do the same thing in turn, and then he'll help you when you fall because it is written that the just man falls seven times. But get it back up. But it doesn't explain how he gets back up. All right, it's the spirit of the Lord who, who uh, it's the spirit of the Lord who will bring you back up. But through men, through brethren. All right. Now it says, uh, I could go all day in brotherly love, and you know, I'm just getting scriptures on why you shouldn't be alone. You know, the benefits of having someone next to you when you fight. All right. Um, this is the book of Proverbs 27 and 17. It says, iron sharpeneth iron, so a man sharpeneth the countenance of his friend. All right? Yeah, this is the point. 
It says, iron sharpens iron. So a man sharpens the countenance of his friend. All right? Because when you actually have a, uh, when you have a tool, all right, say if you have a shovel, the best way to sharpen that shovel is to use it. You know? That's how, that's how it's going to get sharp. I remember actually when I was young, I was actually to have, I had a rock sharpening the tip of the shovel because it was a dull and I needed it to garden, you know, it was kind of hard to dig into the ground. It was fairly new. And my granddad told me, looked at me and asked me what I was doing. And after I told him, he said, it's not going to do anything for that shovel. He said, the only way to sharpen that shovel is to use it. You know, and I thought about that as I got older, you know, it always stuck with me. And I thought about it as I came to the truth was like, you know, um, the scripture says a man of man of knowledge. Uh, I got my pocket for right. I'm going to get it. A man of wisdom. What does it say? It says, uh, damn it. It says, uh, it's the book of, uh, Ecclesiastes 34. Yeah, it says, uh, Ecclesiastes 34 and 9. A man that hath traveled, a man that hath traveled, knoweth many things, and he that have much experience will declare wisdom. See, it's experience. It says, "He that have no experience knoweth very knoweth little, but he that hath traveled is full of prudence." All right. So when you when you actually go through certain things, go through the the trial, you get sharpened. All right. And if you got a brother that iron sharpened iron, you can't sharpen yourself. You actually have to put yourself to the test, man. You know, that's like the like the last scripture I said. How can one how can one get warm alone? All right. From now, let me get eleven and twenty five. Actually, let me go start by Psalms one forty one. Five. This is one I like. All right, this is the case King David speaking. This is a uh, Psalms 141 and 5. Let the righteous smite me, it shall be a kindness, and let him reprove me, and it shall be excellent oil, which shall not break my head, for yet my prayer also shall be in their calamities. All right, the, the first part is what I want to focus on it says, Let the righteous smite me, it shall be a kindness, because you want the righteous to, you want, when they say, right, let the righteous smite me. He's talking about his brothers rebuking him. You know, let let him get rebuked through his brothers, you know, by his brothers through the spirit of the Lord. You know, and, and at the at the at the current time it feels like, you know, it feels grievous, but it yields the peaceable fruit. All right. You put you when you when you rebuke your neighbor, it put that godly that godly fear, as the apostles like to say, that godly fear on you. You know, and that and the brothers don't like to be like like to like to rebuke, you know. Brothers don't delight in rebuking, but you know sometimes it needs to be it needs to be it needs to be handled, you know. But after it's done, the peaceable the peaceable fruit of you getting rebuked is going to be of a uh, of life instead of instead of you know erring from the way. All right, from now let me get the last one is uh, eleven twenty five. I'm gonna get Proverbs eleven verse twenty five. And it reads, it says, the liberal, the liberal soul shall be made fat, and he that water shall be water also of him. And this is talking about um, teaching. All right, so when you water something, you're going to also be watered yourself. I We had a um, brother that used to come camp with us all the time, you know, and he used to he used to quote this all the time. He says, he who watereth, watereth himself. So when you're teaching others, you're also teaching yourself because you know why? Repetition is the master of learning. All right, you learn by repetition. So if you're constantly teaching the same scripture over and over and over, you're gonna you're gonna you're teaching yourself to memorize it. All right, and it's the same thing with uh with brothers, man. You you teaching brothers and you keep rebuking brothers. When you rebuke brothers, it, it, if you know if you're a just man, it reminds you because when you rebuke a brother, you can't be doing the same thing that you're rebuking them for. So when you rebuke a brother. It keeps in your mind, I can't be like, you know, I, I got to make sure I'm not doing what he doing. It's like, I got to make sure I'm not doing what he doing before I say this to him. You know, that's, that goes into that scripture. It says, remove the moat. Before, it says, remove the beam out of thy own eye. Uh, I'm going to have it vice versa. Uh, remove the moat 
remove the beam because the beam is bigger. Remove the beam out of your eye before you remove the moat out of your brother's. Uh, roughly paraphrasing. Yeah, man, but that was it to this lesson. And uh, mainly the, the, the main point was uh, two is better than one. And until next time, hope this video is edifying to the uh, elective Israel. And until next time, I'll say shalom.